Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the University of Saskatchewan. As I pondered this morning when I was driving in to work, I reflected upon there's actually no better place to be this morning than here at the University of Saskatchewan, the University for the People of Saskatchewan, with its many diverse students, faculty, and staff from across the globe. On a chilly Saskatchewan morning, <laughs> the university actually feels the warmth of our many partners across the room. And of course, the University of Saskatchewan is also kept warm by the burning embers of innovation. My name is Karen Chad, and I'm the Vice President of Research for the University of Saskatchewan. And it is my great pleasure to be the MC of today's event. We are extremely pleased that Premier Brad Wall and Advanced Education Minister Rob Norris, who is also the minister responsible for innovation, are here today to make this announcement, which is vitally important to the university research community, our students, and as equally important, our provincial economic future. I'd also at this time like to extend a very special warm welcome to the Honorable Sylvia Fedoric. Sylvia is a former Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, a former University of Saskatchewan Chancellor, and now Professor Emeritus. Starting with her work as a graduate student under University of Saskatchewan physicist Harold Johns, she was a pioneer in Canadian medical physics one of four scientists involved in the development of one of the very first nuclear scanning machines and the cobalt-60 therapy, which revolutionized cancer therapy. By the end of the century, cobalt-60 therapy had helped more than 70 million people worldwide. I thought you'd also be interested in knowing it is almost 60 years to this day, back in March, 60 years ago, in the March issue of Nature was the very first publication of the Cobalt 60 therapy. Congratulations, Sylvia Fedoric. This work is an excellent example of the outstanding foundational research on which today's announcement will build. It is thus very fitting today that we are holding the event this morning in the physics building. It is here where the University of Saskatchewan leadership in nuclear medicine and accelerated technology all began. Canada's first Betatron a particle accelerator was installed here in 1948. It was both the first radiation therapy facility in Saskatchewan for treating patients, before of course the cobalt 60 came along in 1951, and it was also a tool for nuclear physics research. The expertise developed with the Betatron led to the development of a linear accelerator on our campus which in turn, and you know how the rest of this story unfolds, led to the University of Saskatchewan winning the bid to build the Canadian Light Source Synchrotron. Our illustrious early expertise in nuclear medicine, nuclear science and technology thus provides an excellent segue into the subject of today's announcement. I would like now to invite our wonderful leader, Premier Brad Wall, to the podium to make the announcement. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. Um, President McKinnon and Minister Norris, Mayor Acheson, Chancellor, uh, and now we've been joined by the MLA for Saskatoon Sutherland, Jocelyn Schreimer, Dr. Fedoric, 
Mr. Gitzel, uh, soon to me, uh, perhaps coronated CEO of, of Cameco, that's probably the wrong term, but uh, understood. Uh, and uh, members of the faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, uh, it's a great day in the province of Saskatchewan. It is a great day here on campus uh, at the university. Not because of anything that the government has done or is about to do, but because of the critical mass that already exists on this campus and because of the storied history that allows us to build uh, on, uh, on many, many tomorrows uh, in terms of science and innovation uh, using, uh, using uranium for something more than perhaps we've used it for uh, in the past. If there is such a thing as hallowed ground on a secular university, this is it. This is it. When it comes to nuclear medicine, this is a very special place, as Karen has just highlighted. I hope you'll permit me to repeat some of the facts that she's already shared. A few short steps away from us is where Dr. Harold Johns and his team developed the world's first cobalt-60 unit for the treatment of cancer. Testing done led to radiation therapy standards that are still referred to today. November the 8th, 1951, a young mother with cervical cancer became the first treat patient treated by that original cobalt-60 unit. And that young woman is as much a face of uranium and what can come from nuclear science and medicine as any you can imagine. Before November the 8th, 1951, the cervical cancer cure rate was 25%. After November the 8th, 1951, the cure rate for cervical cancer went to 75%. The purpose of what we're about to announce today is that the University of Saskatchewan and the province of Saskatchewan would recapture the leadership that was given us all those years ago, six decades ago. You know, the world is having another look at the possibilities of adding value to uranium, both producing electrons from it in different ways and obviously in terms of medicine, in, in terms of research. Two weeks ago, there was an article in the Sunday New York Times that highlighted the fact the that the Obama administration plans to spend $500 million on developing small modular reactors that would supply electricity to government labs. The longer term goal for their plan is that they wish to develop an assembly line to build small reactors on that, uh, through that kind of a process at costs far lower than that of conventional reactors. That's the vision. There's been money set aside. It's part of the Obama administration's plan. Wouldn't you like it? if the Obama administration science advisors knew that they had to call Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to get some advice, maybe to form a partnership, maybe to develop the expertise that the world could use in this regard. That's the vision of the government, that's the vision of the campus, that that day would come. And so we're announcing today, as part of our plan for adding, for uranium value added in the province, we're announcing today funding for the University of Saskatchewan for a brand new center of excellence for nuclear research to the tune of $30 million over seven years. The center of excellence for nuclear science will have three major priorities. One will be that we would pursue opportunities in nuclear medicine. One would be that we would pursue material science opportunities uh, as a result of uranium. And the other is that Saskatchewan would carve out for itself and for this university a leadership position in the pioneering and the development of small modular reactor technology. The center will coordinate research in these areas. The Center will identify partnerships with the private sector, and I can tell you some have already been identified, and you're going to be hearing more about them in the near future. The center will link up with other labs doing similar work. It will develop areas of specialty and expertise that will be of great value to other scientists and lead to value-added opportunities and jobs and growth across our province. The center will leverage other research dollars from other levels of government. That has already happened, the announcements that have been made 
uh, by the minister earlier on, and again, in just a few days, perhaps you're going to be hearing about some more exciting announcements related to the center, related to the opportunities around nuclear medicine, and related to the, if I may say, minister, perhaps getting ahead of things a little bit, related to a particular form of a medical diagnostics that is currently unavailable in the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, there's only one other province where it is, uh, uh, it is unavailable, that's Prince Edward Island. Uh, and uh, we, want to, uh, we want to ensure that that list is, is only one, at least for now, and the minister will be making some exciting announcements about that in the days ahead. You know, it's well known uh, about our prolific production of uranium. Tim, uh, you could probably talk at length about 1.2 million kilograms or so annually of uranium that we mine a uh, position of leadership in the world. But as I often say, the next ounce of yellow cake that we add value to will be the first. That's got to change. We've seeded ground, we've seeded opportunity, we've seeded science and medical breakthroughs through, for, for whatever reason. We don't need to get into the, maybe the, the, the history around this, but we can reclaim that position, and we should. It'll take public investment today and tomorrow and in the years ahead. It'll take private sector partnerships. That's what we seek to build today. Our government's vision, ladies and gentlemen, is that we take the great resource wealth of our province and use it principally in two areas. One, for immediate near-term advantage for the province, to create the Saskatchewan advantage by paying off debt and lowering taxes, investing in people, building infrastructure. But the second piece around our vision for resource revenue is that we would think of the long term. These are non-renewable resources, after all, so we ought to be taking dividends from their development and investing in the future, investing in the next economy, being a world leader in clean coal technology, and being a world leader in the things that we're talking about here today. And in life science is also so much a part of the University of Saskatchewan. That's the vision that the province has for the future. And we're going to act like that's the vision of the province of Saskatchewan by making important investments. Ms. Minister Norris has got some more things to add to this, I know. But I just want to say to the Chancellor, and very specifically to the, to the President, Peter McKinnon. Thank you for the partners that you are. Thank you for the leadership that already exists here, uh, that we may build together this brand new center and recapture the leadership that people like Dr. Fedora gave us just a few years ago. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you once again, Premier Bradwall, not only for this amazing announcement this morning, but also for your strategic, innovative, and visionary leadership. Speaking of leadership, I recall a conversation that Sylvia Fedorik and I had just moments before the announcement began. And I asked Sylvia, I said, does this bring back memories and Sylvia said to me, Karen, actually, it doesn't. Because back then, we didn't have uh, news conferences. We didn't have gatherings of wonderful partners, students, faculty, when we were doing our work. But she said, rather, and correspondence was different. But she said, I'll always remember one piece of correspondence that she, received, she and her team received about leadership. And that piece of correspondence, and I um, uh, try to summarize Sylvia's words, said, actually, the West shouldn't concern itself with leadership in the whole nuclear agenda because that's Ontario, and specifically, that's Toronto. Little did we know, or did they know, of the outstanding leadership made up of our many partners across this province uh, and our leadership in Premier Brad Wall. Thank you very much. I would like now to call to the podium Minister Rob Norris. Mr. Premier, thanks very much for, uh, for your vision and your support. Uh, Madam Chancellor, it's great to, uh, great to see you this morning, and Mr. President, I notice as well the Provost is here and uh, a number of deans, and uh, 
I'd like to highlight uh, Dean Albritton, uh, the Dean of uh, the College of Medicine, uh, for all your work. As well, uh, Richard Florizone uh, has joined us, and we all know the significant role that Dr. Florizone has played uh, in helping the province and the university. As well, uh, uh, Your Worship, to have you here today reinforces the partnership that exists between the city and the province and the city and the University of Saskatchewan. And we want to thank you for your significant investments and contributions that you make. Uh, to Jocelyn Schreimer, it's great to uh, see you this morning, Jocelyn, and, and, and welcome this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to be on campus, the University of Saskatchewan. In announcing the establishment of this $30 million nuclear research center with a clear emphasis on nuclear medicine, and Dr. Fedorik, your honor to regain that leadership that you so ably contributed to, to put an emphasis on material sciences and to carve out a niche for Saskatchewan regarding small modular reactor technology, as well as highlighting the rollout of Saskatchewan's new nuclear research and development strategy, our Premier affords us a fundamental opportunity to both see and seize upon to think about and help to shape a safe, peaceful, responsible, and robust nuclear research agenda for Saskatchewan in the 21st century and beyond. What's clear is an ethical and practical imperative to move on this strategy by recognizing that through hard work and humility and tireless pursuit and seeking to reclaim that national leadership role in nuclear medicine and related areas, our statement and stance are crystal clear. No longer can governmental nor societal attitudes regarding indifference or indecision, inertia or ideology be considered legitimate barriers to moving forward in vital areas of nuclear medicine and other areas of nuclear research. Areas that we will continue to make announcements about because frankly, the people of Saskatchewan deserve greater access to enhanced diagnostic and treatment capacities, greater access to treatment and care for friends and family. And enhanced care for the people of this province is simply the start. In recent days, the New Yorkers quoted a couple of economists that have talked about the trillions of dollars in social benefits that come directly to medical researchers and communities that support those researchers. And we know that across our city and across the province and certainly here on campus, there is a role to continue the robust traditions that so many of you have helped to create and sustain. We know we need to do that not just for today but for our future. And we certainly know that when we think about recruiting physicians and specialists and healthcare providers, and retaining those that are trained here. And you can certainly see the construction underway in the health science wings. We are committed to ensuring that we have more seats and have more residency positions. The clear call is made. Saskatchewan is going to play a leadership role in medical research for all of Canada, and nuclear research is a robust component of that. Moving out beyond medical research, when we think about material sciences and we think about the work that's already underway here, and I see Chari, you're here and you know this so very well, and AJ Delai, you're here, and others, you know it. And that is making contributions in aerospace. And Jeff, you specifically have been involved in that. And automotives, and utilities, and energy, in information communication technology, the oil and gas sector in metal and pipe production, in manufacturing, in environmental remediation. We know the significance of material sciences today and into the future, and that's why these dollars today are going to help to hire more faculty members. They're going to help to set up new labs. They're actually going to help to renovate the Betatron, and they're going to help provide fellowships for students so that we can continue to pass the torch and sustain the talent that so many of you have helped to contribute. 
The center offers real tangible resources for our students to help move on that long-term vision. And that vision is one, as the Premier has so articulately and clearly spelled out, and that is to sustain the prosperity for the people of this province for decades to come by drawing on the very best of our natural resources and mixing it with our most remarkable resource, our people. We know that there is a global race underway regarding small reactor technology. It's in the literature. In fact, what we saw is Dr. Michael Pinder, the president of the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission just last week make a presentation where he reinforced the significance of the evolving technology regarding small reactors. We know that. And so it's clear. There is an ethical imperative for us to move forward in health research, especially as it relates to nuclear medicine. There's an ethical imperative to ensure that the prosperity agenda includes key areas of innovation that connect our natural resources with our talent of today and of tomorrow. And there is an opportunity for us that we are seizing today and will continue to build on, and that is to bolster the prestige of this institution, of this city, and of our province, and therefore as our country. That is to help ensure that the message is clear, that we want our young people to continue to stay and study and succeed in Saskatchewan the Saskatchewan that is the fastest growing province in Confederation, a Saskatchewan that's going to play a leadership role in nuclear research for today and for the years ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity to join. Thank you very much, Minister Norris. As I mentioned earlier to you, Minister Norris is also responsible uh, for innovation. Affectionately here at the University of Saskatchewan, we uh, most frequently refer to him as Mr. Innovation himself. So Minister Norris, thank you for your leadership and thank you for being a catalyst for change and for innovation. I would now like to call to the podium uh, our president, Peter McKinnon, and it is my honor my privilege and my pleasure to do so. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. One of the great uh, joys of, uh, of the work that I do is the opportunity to participate uh, at events uh, like this and to look around the room and to see so many people who have contributed and continue to contribute so much, uh, not just to the university, but to our city, to our province, and indeed beyond to our country and abroad. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here. It's a special pleasure, I have to tell you, I've been around a long time, and it's a great pleasure to hear a minister responsible for post-secondary education speak to an audience like this, as this minister just did with the orientation to the future. So, uh, Chancellor, Your Worship, MLA, Shriner, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you all for being here this morning. I'd like to, naturally, one of the things in university president's job descriptions is must be able to say thank you. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to begin with that. I want to highly commend and thank you, Premier Wall, and you, Minister Norris, uh, and your government for this visionary and strategic investment. You've heard it, it's a $30 million investment over seven years. It will, you've heard too, enable us to build on the university's proud history as a leader in nuclear medicine and to recover and recapture that best of our history. Um, this new center will not be another large bricks and mortar building there will be an office, to be sure, which will coordinate so many of the activities of the center that will be spread across the university's academic units and its partner agencies. In fact, this unique center is appropriately described as a hub for a network of partners, training partners such as the University of Regina and SIASP and SIIT, research partners at other universities, health service delivery partners, including health regions, industry, and government. 
through these partnerships and through the investment that you've heard described, we will be very well positioned to improve health care through better diagnostic imaging, to improve safety for workers at uranium mines through research into more effective monitoring at those mines, to develop new materials for longer lasting nuclear components, and to engineer new ways to analyze the safety and quality of nuclear systems. The research that we undertake in key areas of nuclear medicine, nuclear science and engineering materials will complement the research that's already underway at the Canadian Light Source Synchrotron at the Slowpoke Re Research Reactor of the uh, Saskatchewan Research Council and the uh, unique in Canada uh, Tokamak Fusion Reactor, which is housed, by the way, in this building on the lower level. It will also build on the nuclear-related research we currently undertake, such as engineering and geological engineering research related to the nuclear cycle, from exploration through to processing, power, and safe storage, research into environmental remediation and stewardship, and research into northern community development options. This new center will attract. It is absolutely key from the university's perspective. It will help us attract top faculty and students to the U of S and create new opportunities in Canada's growing nuclear industry for our very well-trained graduates. <coughs> Working with partners in industry and government, we will train much-needed nuclear scientists, engineers, and technologies, as well as healthcare professionals in areas such as imaging and nuclear medicine. This center will also advance at least three of our signature areas of research. We worked hard at the university to identify areas in which we expect the University of Saskatchewan to be among the best in the world. And you must be compelling and credible when you say that. And we are compelling and credible in our signature areas, and this center will advance them. The uh, animal-human environment interface, synchrotron sciences, energy and mineral resources, these are among our signature areas. And this announcement strengthens and adds credibility to, to three of those. Universities have a responsibility to engage with the economic and social issues of the day. As was stated in our fourth institutional commitment around innovation, the University of Saskatchewan has a special responsibility towards areas of urgent provincial interest, including economic development in Saskatchewan. We can do more in both research and commercialization, providing direct benefits for the provincial and national economies. And that's not new for the University of Saskatchewan. Established as it was on the foundations of two great colleges, the College of Arts and Science and the College of Agriculture, Unique in the country at the time, the idea was, of course, that the university would play a vital role in building and developing the agricultural industry, and there's no question but that the record of the province, the history of the province, the history of this university demonstrates the critical role that the College of Agriculture at the University of Saskatchewan and today the College of Agriculture and Bioresources, the Crop Development Centre and its associated activities have played in developing that industry in our province. So this is not new to us. We know how to do this and we look forward with enthusiasm to the new chapter that lies ahead. We'll be the first university in Canada to lead a strategic and interdisciplinary focus on nuclear studies, embracing both the latest science across the entire nuclear fuel cycle and the full environmental and social context of nuclear development. Located in the province, which is, as you all know, the world's largest producer of uranium, the U of S must be a key participant in the national network of leading edge research into nuclear science, medicine, materials, especially given that nuclear power is increasingly seen as a vital part of a diversified national energy strategy. The center will provide many benefits for our research community. For instance, by 2016, 12 new faculty and six new staff positions will have been created. On an annual basis, more than 30 graduate students and postdoctoral fellows will be supported. Internships and co-op placements will be in place. Additional benefits including a 3.2 million investment in new laboratory equipment, $750,000 in new faculty startup funds, 411,000, not 10, not 12, 411,000 <laughs> in annual expenditures for new research initiatives, outreach and engagement, and $325,000 in research grants available to faculty on a competitive basis. Historically, most of the research teaching and value-added nuclear industry has been concentrated in Eastern Canada. This new center will build on our historic scientific strengths, our unique sense of place to develop research and training that will be useful both in Saskatchewan and in the future for Canada and beyond. 
So once again, and in conclusion, I want to express our deep appreciation. The most important words of the English language are thank you. The most important words in any language, translated or otherwise, say thank you. And I want to again say thank you, Mr. Premier, and thank you, Minister, for this extraordinary, wonderful, unique, and visionary announcement. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Peter McKinnon. Earlier on this morning, at the beginning and throughout the announcement, many of the speakers have used the word the Betatron. And specifically, we talked about the Betatron machine. For those of you who may not know, it was installed and began to be used for cancer treatments back when Sylvia Fedoric was a graduate student when she went to work later as chief medical physicist at the Saskatoon Cancer Clinic, she was responsible for the calibration of the Betatron and ensuring that cancer treatments were planned using the machine. Though the Betatron has long since been disassembled, we have been able to locate a key component of the original 1948 machine. It's called a toroid. It's the vacuum tube in which the electrons were circulated at close to the speed of light. We also have on display a large betatron from the 60s that was built here strictly for plasma physics. I would now like to invite Professor Emeritus, Sylvia Fedoric, Premier Wall, and President McKinnon to the podium for a photo to mark this special and historic occasion. <laughs> 